a lot of our people kept the Obama inspector general. And I think, generally speaking, that's not a good thing to do, but they've kept him. But I told them for three years, I said, anybody wants to get rid of their inspector generals because they were appointed by President Obama, I think you should do so. Some of them didn't, but now they're doing, a couple of them are doing it now. President Trump defending his removal of four inspectors general in the last two months, a pattern that has raised concerns among Democratic and Republican lawmakers. NBC News has now learned that the State Department watchdog, Steve Linick, who the president removed last Friday night, was looking into Secretary Pompeo's decision to approve an arms sale to Saudi Arabia, despite objections from Congress. This comes after we learned that Linick was also looking into whether Pompeo had a staffer perform personal tasks. Republican congressman from Texas and ranking member of the House and Ways Committee joins me now, Kevin Brady. Good morning, Congressman Brady. Um, what is your take uh, Thanks, on the president's you? latest IG removal? I'm, I'm well, thank you. Your president's yeah, so, take on the latest IG yeah. removal. Yeah, thank you. So uh, I, I, I'm a big believer in inspector generals and the oversight role that they play in the agency, certainly in the agencies, ways and means uh, deals with in health, in treasury, uh, in the IRS, and others. Uh, having said that, uh, I, I always note none of the four uh, were fired. Uh, two of them were acting and replaced by either permanent or acting inspector generals, two were restored to their principal inspector general. So all of them continue to play an oversight role. But but to your point, they are political appointees. Uh, that is a separation of powers issue. The president has the ability to do that, uh, as Congress uh, uh, does oversight as well. And so um, I, yeah, I'm confident co uh, Congress will question the president about uh, decision making on this. But at the end of the day, you know, it is his call to have inspector generals appointed by his administration. Uh, what is your take on this new bill that's been introduced that would give more protection to inspectors general? Do you support it? You know, I haven't seen the bill. Who is it uh, introduced by? Democrats, Bob Menendez from New Jersey. Yeah, no, so I haven't seen the bill. I certainly review it um, uh, again. I think it's key to have qualified people in those roles. Uh, I know it's important uh, for the system <clears throat> to work. We have pretty aggressive oversight in Congress and the House and Senate uh, as well. So uh, I'm, I'm not concerned about any lessening of oversight. And I'll tell you, on the CARES bill itself, I think we have uh, eight different <clears throat> commissions, inspector generals, plus 12 different committees uh, doing the oversight. I think this will be the most uh, scrutinized piece of legislation in American history. So I'm pretty confident we'll have strong oversight there. Well, actually, the PPP program doesn't have a commission overseeing it. And last week, the Treasury Department said they would not pursue any loan under $2 million for fraud because they didn't have the bandwidth, which I get that. But we have the bandwidth in the media and none of the loan information is public yet. Do you support the SBA making it public, which they have done in every program before all of the tax IDs for the PPP loans? So I don't know about the tax IDs, but ultimately I think more transparency is better than less in almost every instance. So obviously I want to see that um, uh, strong oversight there. But, but let's keep this in perspective as well. I think all of us early on were concerned, you know, about some of these big businesses getting loans and would that push our small businesses out? Turns out, no. Uh, according to the Associated Press, uh, uh, for every 27,000 small business loans, there were one that was approved for a publicly held company. And in total, those publicly held companies only received one half of one percent of the total amount. So there's no question this has been an overwhelmingly small business loan program. It is, Stephanie, as you said, yes. not perfect. Uh, I see, I, was, I welcome Secretary Mnuchin uh, and others uh, providing even more flexibility this week to make sure that uh, different industries, I think, are going to have different timetables for recovering and giving flexibility to them as they bring their workforce back. I think that's something both parties welcome. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.